All right, let's do this. Hello, friends and fiends. Welcome to Bugs Need Heroes, a podcast illustrating the inspiring ability of insects. I'm Amanda. And I'm Kelly. Before we get started creating this bug-themed character, what's bugging you, Kelly? What's bugging me? Um, oh, I guess... Well, I just turned 40 this week. That's bugging me a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. You're an adult now. Am I? Get your cocoon ready. You're coming out. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> it's time for me to to move out of this pupil stage into an adult. Now to have well, two we'll weeks of goes. guilt-free binge eating. <laughs> and all the... Uh... PG. This is PG. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, but yeah, so uh, I I turned forty. I feel twenty eight, if that's a uh, if that's appropriate. I don't understand what age or time is. Thanks. To oh COVID. yeah, totally. Once you reach a certain age, you're like, yeah, that's me. I, I'm thirty two, so I'm a little bit younger than you because you're closer to my brother's age. And they'll be like, are you a person between the ages of twenty and twenty nine? I'm like, yeah, I am. Wait, yeah. no, I'm not. I I, I really Mentally not. I have been for years. Physically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I have all the same hobbies of someone between 20 and 29. Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot has changed in my life, but has that much changed in my life, really? Considering we've all kind of been on pause for the last couple of years. I'll tell you what's bugging me. And this is a, a parent thing. So I apologize yeah. for that. We've been watching this show called Octonauts. And it's a great show. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's about these little animals and they're rescue rangers, essentially. And they go and rescue other animals from their problems. And like any anthropomorphized show there's an issue of like why do some animals behave like humans and other animals oh. behave like animals but the thing that really bothers me is that this show is educational and sometimes they get stuff wrong and so now i know enough to be annoyed when something's wrong but i don't know enough <laughs> welcome to my world to always know when something is wrong so i'm i'm sitting here thinking they got the blobfish episode wrong what else did they get wrong that i'm being miseducated about what what is it well, a lot of times with, I think, shows like that, they're just trying to generally educate and not get super specific. Um, even with this podcast, sometimes I'm a, I'll be a little bit general about species or, or groups. Not that I'm making excuses for Octonauts. I've never seen it. But. <laughs> <laughs> no one needs to make excuses for Octonauts. The main character's name is Captain Barnacles, which I think really sets the tone for the whole show. He's a polar bear with a mustache. I want a dog named Captain Barnacles. It's, it's a good name. It's a, it's a pretty name. international show, too. It has, like, a lot of uh, international characters. But we don't need to talk about Octonauts. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that might be bugging people this time of year is ants in their house. Nothing makes my husband crazier than ants in the house. Like, if a single ant touches a plate, that entire plate of food <laughs> is dead to him. It's just an ant. Literally last night, he was like, this food's dead to me when we had enchiladas. That's a shame because enchiladas are delicious. They were good enchiladas. I mean, nothing wrong with the Winco brand enchilada. It barely touched the plate, just like, you know, the underside of the plate. And he's like, this whole plate's dead to me. And maybe I'm the grosso who's like, eh, it's just one of the land. I mean, their little feet do touch a lot of things, but it's, I don't know. It's one ant. I would just eat the enchilada. <laughs> Maybe part of it is that he's picking up the odorous house ant flavor and he hates blue cheese, which I hear they're very similar flavored. If you eat an ant on accident, they taste like blue cheese. <laughs> so yeah, depending on which species of ant you're picking up and putting in your mouth, they uh, can taste like blue cheese or some taste like citrus, like a little pop of citrus because of the oh. formic acid they produce. Yeah, ants are, ants are neat. We should be eating more ants if we were being 100% <laughs> honest about like our our ecological footprint on the planet. We should be eating more bugs. And it sounds like ants is a good place to start because they have tasty flavors already built in. Have you ever eaten a bug? A little off topic, but... Uh, I've eaten cricket flour. On purpose. Yeah, yeah, on purpose. <laughs> I'm sure I've eaten tons, not on purpose. Uh, on purpose, I've eaten cricket flour. I've eaten... I want to say I've eaten one of those lollipops with a cricket in it. Mm. Like they, it looks like, you know, a piece of amber with a bug inside. Yeah. Those just seem gross. I don't, <laughs> it's not going to be a tasty cricket in the middle of that lollipop. Yeah. We had like a fear factor thing at work where someone was like, oh, I'll eat the scorpion inside the lollipop. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Not even a little bit. But as far as on purpose, I think just crickets. 
possibly ants. I think I've possibly eaten a chocolate covered ant, but maybe I've blocked that out of my memory and don't really recall. I've eaten a mealworm before and they were, I think they were fried because it was very crispy and it was dipped in barbecue powder and it tasted just like a tiny barbecue potato chip. Well, the name's right there. They're a mealworm. We should be eating yeah. them for meals. But they were very small. I don't know that I want to eat like a super worm. The, the large oh, ones yeah. from the from the pet store that you might feed to your wizards. That, that might be too much mealworm for me. What's that book? How to Eat Fried Worms, where he eats like 10 worms for a dare. Very influential <laughs> on young me, obviously. <laughs> oh. We know how I feel about worms. It's a hard no. no for I me. found one. <laughs> it's been hot here in the Pacific Northwest. Whereas usually it is quite wet. And so we found a worm that I can only describe as flambéed on, on the sidewalk. It was crispy. We should do a whole episode on worms and worm behavior and why you see them on the pavement. Okay. We'll have to prep you ahead of time. It's, we're going to talk about worms. I know you hate worms, but we're going to get through it together. I'll take a deep breath and we'll discuss worms. But uh, they're, they're interesting. But today, so today we're doing... Pavement ants. Pavement ants. And do they stay on the pavement or do they come in my house? No, they will come in your house. Oh. Um, in the winter, they like warm places. Oh, so they're definitely coming in so my they'll, house. So they'll really come in my house. Uh, but mostly, you know, you'll find them exactly where you expect in the pavements. Between oh. where two two concrete slabs meet and they dig down in the middle. You, you ever see those little mounds of dirt? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, the little, those are... little volcanoes along the cracks. Yeah, little little ant volcanoes. Tiny little volcanoes on the top, but underneath their their nest can spread for about like 18 to 20 feet. For the, the rest of the world, it's about five and a half to six meters in diameter. Wow, so they're, they're big under there. There's a Very whole big world. How many ants will live in a, a is it a nest or a colony? Um, I mean, they're technically a colony, but people oh, call okay. them nests. Well, how many people, uh, people, how uh, many ants live in a colony? <laughs> about 10,000 workers alone. Oh, wow. Plus a queen, sometimes more than one queen if you've got a particularly large colony. Oh, you can have more than one queen? Like, you use the same little worker dudes? Yeah, oh yeah, they kind of... Oh. But again, that's really if you're talking like a massive colony. And then there are drones uh, that kind of fill that out as well. And the drones are the males. They're just in a frat house and they're waiting for their chance. Yeah, yeah, they have one job. <laughs> they have one, and they're just like lifting tiny little ant weights like, yeah, someday <laughs> it'll be me. They're uh, doing the what? What is that from uh, Jersey Shore? The oh yeah, the pump it thing. <laughs> it's pumping. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> well, our our ants luckily don't don't need beers. Oh, there. Although they do like sweet things, so if you spill some beer on the sidewalk, we might get a, a little bit of a little bit of a swarm going. They'll on. be on it. They're ready to come. Because in my house, it seems to be dropped tortilla chips. If there's ever a dropped tortilla <laughs> chip, they're on that like ants on a tortilla chip (laughs) they're taking it away in big old chunks so those might be the odorous house ants or they could be the pavement ants they they kind of look the same uh, unless you can really zoom in is there an easy way to tell which kind of ant it is the odorous one or the pavement oh yeah the the easiest way is to murder them oh no (laughs) (laughs) if you crush the odorous house ant, it'll smell like blue cheese the pavement ant doesn't smell like blue cheese if you want to go the humane route and make sure that you're not, you've got one species over the other, the pavement ants have real wrinkly little faces, like little old men running around your pavement. Um, they have two spines on their thorax facing backwards towards the, uh, towards like that skinny waist region and, uh, and a stinger, a really teeny tiny stinger on the pavement ants. And the odorous house ants don't have spines and they can't sting and their faces are not wrinkly. So if you can get that close and really take a look, you might need a microscope or a magnifying glass. You can you can tell the difference. Yeah, good to know. So Amanda, I think this hero might be a little harder for you to draw than the than maybe the last two. Oh yeah, probably. We gotta we gotta diversify our types of heroes here too. And I think the obvious thing to do with ants, because they are so necessary for our ecosystems, but mm-hmm. they're also just annoying little buggers, aren't they? <laughs> Because they're in your house, they're taking your stuff, they're ruining your picnics. Making your husband throw his enchilada away. <laughs> Making my husband throw his enchilada away, even though it was a perfectly good enchilada. I feel like they need to be kind of an anti-hero sort of character. An ant. Plus, I, I love to say 
Ant a hero? Yeah, of course. We should, of course, at this point acknowledge that there is an Ant Man, mm -hmm. but his powers are really just shrinking and growing. And even then, they're not really powers because they're technologically based. But he just gets big and small. Yeah, our, our ants don't do that. No. Oh my gosh! Imagine if ants could change size. Ugh. Horrifying. <laughs> but they do talk to each other. At least Ant Man. Yeah does talk to ants so there is plenty of communication that goes on uh, between ants uh, mostly for identifying each other location of food they follow each other so they have little chemical packets on the ground so you've ever seen ants like following each other in a circle or something yeah yeah in a big parade of ants yeah that's that's how they do it and it's also really useful when identifying an ant that's not in your colony because the really kind of fun thing about this particular species of ant is they like to go to war with each other. <gasps> it's little pavement wars. I had no idea there was combat being waged upon my pavement. <laughs> teeny tiny combat going teeny, on right combat. under your feet. <laughs> so obviously this should be a combat ready character. Mm -hmm. I think we need to start with perhaps the most questionnaire questions. So, okay. So I've heard that... There's the queen, there's the drones, there's the workers. And I've always heard that the workers are female. But are they female or are they just not male? Uh, they, they are female, but they're not reproductive. Right. So they can't produce offspring. So they're sterile. But in every other way, they're females. Some females of different species can become uh, queens if, if they have to. If something happens to the queen. But I'm trying to just put out general yeah, general statements. Yeah, this is the problem with choosing like a one species of ant. It's hard to not, it's hard not to generalize. So you couldn't like make a worker fertile. You have to get the, the special you're the queen juice as a larva. The, well, yeah, because the workers, the, the female workers are, are missing some pretty key anatomy when it comes to egg laying and we call it the, an ovipositor. It, it looks like a stinger. You've probably seen these uh, like really long ones before on certain species of wasp, and you assume it just has a real giant stinger, but that's an ovipositor. We should talk about those types of wasps too on another podcast. Wasps. They'll definitely the, be a villain. So some will be villains and some will be heroes. Uh, wasps are actually pretty amazing. So when they do wage these wars, it, it kind of starts when two ants meet each other on the sidewalk and they touch antennae to exchange uh, chemical information on, on where they're from and are they nest mates. And if they're not nest mates, um, this can kind of trigger a, a chain reaction and the one ant will go get more of its friends. They'll come back, do some more touching, figuring out, okay, this definitely is not my nest mate. And now a fight can break out. Oh man, and, it's on and, now. <laughs> now the soldier ants come. Uh, and the soldier ants are, are a little bigger. They have a lot wider heads, more interesting mandibles used for crushing and dismembering. And uh, they, they, yeah, they kind of come up. And then, the, then the war, the war gets kind of feisty. And, and you'll see either little tiny swirls of chaos or one big maelstrom of insanity once they all get together and fight. So those big like swarms of ants I'll see sometimes on the sidewalk is that a bug war? Because I always thought that was like. A queen! Coronation is happening! <laughs> Generally, when you see a big swarm of ants like that, um, it's either a food source or or it's a little war that's happening. Um, I lean down and take a look at, so you can see what's happening. <laughs> but then they'll smell me and know that I'm not a mess, nest mate and they'll be coming for me. <laughs> oh, lucky for you, they'll be busy. <laughs> they'll be busy with each other. And can I tell the soldiers apart from the little worker guys? Well, I mean, they're all the same size, so technically they're all soldiers and they're all workers. At least for these guys. Yeah, for this group. There are distinct, much larger soldiers in other ant species, which I'm sure we'll cover in other ant-related episodes. And the drone and the queen are twice the size of the workers. And the drones do get involved in the war, but sadly, it doesn't usually end well for them. They just get their little wings ripped off in the process. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> So they're coming up there and they're like, don't worry, ladies, I've got this. And then they just immediately get taken out. Well, it turns out being big, surrounded by tiny things that can swarm you is not super helpful. Well, that's like the whole strategy of the ant is that there's just a bazillion of them. Oh, yeah. So even though they're small, they can overwhelm larger projects, as it were. Oh, absolutely. 
So Amanda, thinking back to our other episode with your not thinking too hard on caterpillars becoming moths. To be fair, I was a child. I was a child (laughs) when I didn't consider the the life stages of bugs. But I assume the ants have the similar stages of like egg, larva, pupate. I guess you don't really think about ants pupating much. You don't. That's more the wheelhouse of the caterpillar. Right. Yeah, we call that a complete life cycle is when you go from egg to larva to pupa to adult. Um, There are incomplete life cycles too, which are things like grasshoppers that just go from egg to nymph to adult, no pupil stage. Uh, So it's a difference with those. But ants do go through all these stages. And what's kind of cool, I think, at least about an ant colony, is the intense care they give to their offspring. So the eggs are tended to, they're cleaned, they move them sometimes. The larvae are also cleaned and they're brought food. So the workers will feed their, their young and tend to them in any, any of their needs. Uh, and same thing with pupae. Once, once an ant becomes a, pupae, a pupa, the workers still have to come keep it clean and, and make sure it's doing all right. So it's, it, I love the parental care aspect of these big colonies. You don't think about, I think, bugs in the general. You don't think about them having any sort of care and, and nannying of each other. But it, clearly right. these ants have to nanny these little bugs babies so that they can grow up to become workers in their own right exactly and uh, well i mean i know i said parental care this would actually be sibling care because they're all sisters oh yeah 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 taking care of each other the only parent is the the queen and that one male who who did his business and is it like other drones where once he's uh completed his call to duty he's he's done he's out of here he's got one job One job. He had one job. Uh, they, they actually come together in these big uh, swarms at the end of spring, early summer. Uh, I don't know if you've seen them. You'll actually start seeing flying ants coming into your house. And this is true of, of many ant species. They swarm together, males, uh, flying males and flying queens, and they mate. And then the queens will land on the, hopefully on the pavement and not in your house. Uh, they, they drop their wings yeah. because they don't need them anymore. They burrow down and then they start laying their eggs. And it takes about maybe 20, 20 days or so for those eggs to hatch and start the, the first workers to emerge. It's pretty neat. Uh, and if you ever wanted to start your very own ant farm, look for the swarm to happen and, uh, and take, a, take a queen. Get her ready because they, really, they do really well in captivity. They're, they're excellent little pet ants. Is there such thing as an excellent pet ant? <laughs> I've never understood the ant farm thing. I I guess I can understand why other people would find it fascinating, but I never did it. I would just be too nervous about them getting out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, oh, here it is, a, a jar of things I don't want in my house. In my house, <laughs> especially with kids, I'd be afraid a kid would knock it over and spill ants everywhere. Oh yeah, that's why I don't currently have a fish tank. <laughs> Because for sure, that's Mm. coming over. And then I've got nasty fish juice in my carpet, which is not what I want. (laughs) But I think ants, I don't know. As an adult, I kind of want an ant farm. I don't think my husband would be too cool about it. No. (laughs) I can see how it could be soothing to watch them do their little anti things. Like, look at them. They're just going through life. They've got missions. They've got goals. What what are your hopes and dreams, little ants? And they're like, no hopes, dreams. Only serve the queen. (laughs) (laughs) Only get food. Only get food. Well, luckily they're they're easy to feed too. They'll eat. They like sweet things. They like fruit. They like nuts. Well, here in the Pacific Northwest, sometimes that odorous ant we've now mentioned several times, <laughs> we call them sugar ants because they will come and find anything with sugar in it and take it. But the pavement ant and the sugar ant are two different things. Yeah, yeah, they're not. They're not the same thing. Um, although uh, I think we we talked about this a little behind the scenes action. We talked about this before the show started. I don't I don't remember calling anything a sugar ant here in New Jersey, but it could just be could just be me. I am a weirdo. The local colloquialisms for what we call bugs has been one of the most fascinating parts <laughs> of doing this. Is the East Coast versus West Coast names for these bugs? Our colloquial bug war, our bug naming. Oh wars. no! <laughs> 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 vote in the comments what do you call a woolly bully you know that sort of stuff well we've determined woolly bully is strictly an amanda term strictly me it's just eight-year-old me being like let him go, woolly bully. <laughs> so let's talk about this character for a hot minute yeah how's, how's the drawing coming so we i went with female i know that we're on episode three it's, a, it's another lady but i i would let it happen so she is tough she's a she's a soldier so I, I've made her very tough. She's an anti-hero, which it seems like 
a lot of times if a hero is an anti-hero, they have some sort of militant background. Yeah. The Punisher, I guess, is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what's think, another anti-hero you're, you're thinking of? I think Punisher's a good one. I think you get a lot in the 90s. There's a lot of these... Mm. I, I, at least the aesthetic of the anti-hero. Like, Cable has a very anti-hero oh, Cable. aesthetic. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Eric is mentioning Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah, Deadpool has a very uh, militant aesthetic. A lot of pockets. So I've added pockets on her hips to reference those two spine mm -hmm. bumps. Oh, I like that. I like that. I've given her scars across the face to reference her wrinkly face. Plus, she's a badass. And it seems like badasses always have that one scar that goes from like above the eyebrow down to the <laughs> cheek. I call it the Anakin Skywalker. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Precisely so. There's a lot in Final Fantasy, too. You'll see Final Fantasy dudes with that one scar all the time. They're like, how do I know that this guy's seen some things? I know. The Anakin Skywalker scar. <laughs> uh, I gave her kind of a gender non-conforming haircut. It's just down to brass tacks. I need this hair out of my way. Short oh, haircut. Yeah. She's a grumpy expression. I would picture a side shave. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Let me give her a... Uh, I'll come in here and raise some of these bangs. And we'll give her... <laughs> choo -choo 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 -choo. Give her kind of a... There we go. And we'll make it clear this is where the hair actually starts. I'm excited. I, I thought this one was going to be a lot harder for you, but you seem to just be chugging along. Well, once we add pockets, the Rob Liefeld spirit just... <laughs> takes me over. <laughs> and she becomes... She comes. Oh, I also gave her the snatchest of waists. She is. <laughs> oh, it's got to be teeny tiny. <laughs> it's we're, it's we're as, talking... as tiny as I felt comfortable giving her. Uh, but if we're going pure '90s pockets and waists here, and anti heroes, then she's got to have the tiny. Where do you fit your organs? Waist. The a lot of comics. I, I still feel. Still today, sometimes I'm like, you guys. She has to have organs. You gotta let her. Let a girl breathe. Derek's typing to us. The organs are in their abdomen. Yeah, yeah. So she doesn't really need, you know, all the organs just hang out in the abdomen. So you can have a little teeny tiny waist. Her waist can be small because in a real ant, they're they're backing up that truck anyway. The organs. <laughs> or always say that all her organs are in the back. I'm picturing that Aeon Flux waist. Do you remember that? Oh man, Aeon Flux. What a time. I'm going to close my eyes. There was a fly in there because that's cool, I guess. But that's, that's the teeny tiny waist I'm picturing for this is Aeon Flux. Am I pronouncing that wrong? Is it Aeon Flux? Am I, I, am I one Flux. of those? I did it right. <laughs> it just feels like uh, the, the moment where the famous moment where you close the eye and it captures that, that the bug. Fly. Yeah. Yeah. If I was a super ninja, wouldn't I get rid of that fly way before it's all up in my eye juice? Like, <laughs> gonna steal my moisture? Ugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so producer Derek has, has provided an Aeon Flux picture. And, yep, look at how elongated that waist is. You can't yeah. put anything in yes. there. Yes, this is a... I, nothing in there. Oh, Aeon Flux. What a time. <laughs> oh, I've pulled up an image and she is just straight up not wearing pants i forgot that she doesn't wear pants in the original i was thinking of the uh is it charlize theron version where they tried to yeah yeah they she's been making badass movies for a long time oh she's so cool if i i want to be charlize theron she's if i'm 100 percent honest looking at this aeon flux image now she could just be the ant hero <laughs> she's got <laughs> these two mandible hairs yeah my work here was uh, not necessary. Does she have pockets? She does have pockets on her naked thighs. There's nothing nothing but pockets. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Two little holsters. Oh, now I'm going to be very influenced by this. To me, she's, she's she immediately came to mind when you started talking about what kind of hero to draw. She's got that long ant waist. Well, I mean, I try not to look up any reference photos ahead of time so we can purely work from the information you give me. But I appreciate that. But dang, if this character <laughs> doesn't, she, uh, they should change her name. She should be Ant-Man now. <laughs> Aeon Ant-Man. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to see what it looks like. Oh, you know, like a goofy thing about these ants and not just about these ants, about a few ants. So we were talking about they, they like sweet things, right? Yeah. So they, they really like aphid honeydew. Do you? 
Do you know what aphid honeydew is? It sounds like a euphemism. For... It does sound like a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> it so kind of is. Of... It's a little bit of a euphemism. Like you walk into our bug themed bar. Isabella Tiger Moth is already there waiting for you, and you say, "I'd like an aphid honeydew shaken, not stirred." <laughs> and they hand you a glass of what I can only assume is aphid pee. Maybe. Oh, uh, it, it is aphid excretia. Ah. We, so the aphids are eating they eat sap they're sap suckers and when they're done they have to create waste but that waste comes out as a, a little sugar globule these ants and other species of ants will protect the aphids and then harvest their honeydew or harvest their waste as food they're out here <laughs> making f- aphid farms yes. and then drinking them a little their straw. Pee? wearing little straw hats they're they're milking those aphids <laughs> they got one long piece of grass in their mouth <laughs> do, do, do. gotta go check on the aphids ladybugs no and then the this is a horrible situation where the ladybugs have invaded this farmland exactly we're, we're creating a quite the quite the story between us <laughs> <laughs> here well, yeah, well we gotta get all the information you can How's the drawing coming? Okay, so let me extend her waist a little bit here. Make her make it comically long. <laughs> just as just as snatched, but a little bit a little bit longer. Like a little cor- is she wearing a little corset? I, I'm gonna snatch? put some corset imaging on it just to try and uh, <laughs> really make it clear that you shouldn't be like this. You've you've become like this through mistakes. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, I don't know if you watch RuPaul's Drag Race, but. Uh... I dabble. I dabble in some. Dabble. Violet Chachki <laughs> had like really tight corseting. I don't know how some of these drag queens do it with the corseting. There is an interesting episode of Try Guys where they try corsets over a weekend and they really get into some of the ups and downs of corseting. <laughs> At the uh, Mütter Museum in Philadelphia, they had two skeletons mm-hmm. and one of them had been doing the tight wasting corseting things so you can see how much it deforms the rib cage really wow i'd say the big difference fascinating. a brief aside from me to you as a as an art history person to a bug lady the big difference fashion wise you see at the turn of the century is they start to abandon the corset in particular because it, what what caused that well because people kept dying is the short <laughs> oh oh answer. okay well so one of the cliches with ants is the the old adage about how they can lift 10 times their weight. If they if you were the size of an ant, you could lift a VW bug over your head or whatever it is. How true is that? How how much can they really lift in comparison to how big they are? Oh yeah. Um well d- depending on the species, they can lift 50 to 100 times their weight. Ants are ants are pretty almost magical in that aspect. So I would say those myths are pretty true. Well, I mean, I I said I see them in my house carrying away little tortilla chunks, and those tortilla <laughs> chip chunks are pretty big compared to them. And so, what do they do with the food once they take it away? Do they eat it as a tortilla chip, or do they have to like, because like a bee turns it into honey? They have to break it down. They use en- enzymes to break it down. Uh, some species of ant have fungal farms, and they'll they'll bring the food in for the fungus to break down. So they have this mutual relationship with fungi. So you'll have. <laughs> On one side of the farm, you have fungus, and on the other side of the farm, aphids. <laughs> well, the aphids stay on the, the aphids stay on the plants, but but yeah, kind of. Oh, I'm gonna give our character one piece of grass <laughs> to denote coming out of her mouth here to denote her humble beginnings as a farmer's daughter. Mo- moving on to being a vigilante. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she saw injustice in the world, and she she had to do something about it. She saw another ant and had to fight. That's correct. Correct. <laughs> Get off my pavement. <laughs> so to denote her super strength, do you think we should give her... I mean, because I'm back in that 90s place. I want to give her a oh, robot yeah. arm. Yeah, I would but go with a robot think arm. Super strength is enough for her, but I love How about a, robot like arm. a big, thick robot arm? Oh, yeah. Like way too big for her body, too I think. Big. If we're too going big. 90s, it's got to be too big. <laughs> it's got to be just this massive winter soldier arm that clearly doesn't fit yeah. her at all. Because that, that feels very 90s too, doesn't it? They made exaggerated oh, yeah. limbs. Oh, yeah. All, all, if the people who know about what it was like to read comics in the 90s will appreciate how ridiculous of a time it was <laughs> in comics. 
Yeah, we, we've already given away our age. They know where we yeah, are. Yeah, at this point, we've already, we've already exposed <laughs> you know. ourselves as, as no good elder millennials. <laughs> That's all I'll hum, because you don't want to get a copyright claim. <laughs> yeah, we can't afford that. Don't hum we the whole can't song. Afford Two the, seconds only. Can't afford a, a single clip from the single coolest opening song of all time. I mean, say what you want about the MCU coming in and trying to, like, save marvel which obviously they did but the 90s cartoons had a moment there between the spider-man cartoon and the x-men cartoon i believe they crossed i love the x-men cartoon i love that so much oh yeah very influential on young me call everybody sugar for a while (laughs) so yeah the they they break down this their food in, in these these dedicated chambers, at least in their colonies, the food isn't just everywhere. They have the specific chambers, the food storage. And what's great about a big war is all those bodies are food. So they collect all the fallen, their own and the other colony, and they bring them on down to the food storage. Oh no, <laughs> no, that's like an episode of Hannibal, where it's like, oh, they're they're using the bodies of their enemies to grow all their mushrooms. They uh. I mean, waste not, want not, right? Waste Answer. not, want not, says the ant. I can, I can uh, stand for a ecologically friendly <laughs> use of your enemy's <laughs> bodies. Well, what was that? Isn't there a parable, the ant and the grasshopper, where the ant is prepared? Oh, yeah, winter? he's ready. And, and now I know he's prepared because he's using the bodies of his friends. It's little, fine. <laughs> oh, man. Little did that grasshopper know that, like, they're like, yeah, we'll help you survive the winter. But if not... <laughs> oh, we're I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> so really, uh, the ant has nothing to lose by helping him. No, but n- nature doesn't like waste. Uh, everything in nature goes goes towards something, right? All the dead, the dead are nutrients for other other things. Uh, I believe their bodies turn into the grass, and then they eat the grass, and then we eat the antelope. The circle of life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Correct. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh derek has shared a video for us oh look at them go is this your video derek yes oh can we share this on the instagram yeah well i'll I'll get those up at some point yeah did these ants sign a (laughs) sign a release (laughs) to use their images (laughs) (laughs) oh look at them swarming so i probably shouldn't take a magnifying glass when they're swarming like this and just wreak havoc become a third warrior in these wars the magnifying <laughs> glass <laughs> yeah i think it's a if you want to become the god the yes god, that is yeah. what i want i want to become a god to these raining ads. down fiery wrath on this small war that they're waging between each other i mean it's very cinematic isn't it they're fighting each other and then they look off camera the camera pans to this <laughs> giant laser <Lens. laughs> just, oh, sh- <laughs> sh- taking out all although, their brother although I, I think I, I do have to say and I guess I'm going to have to say this every episode uh, don't kill the bugs <laughs> that we're talking about uh, don't like, throw oh, them wolf. Yeah, don't, don't, throw, throw, them. don't throw them don't, kill don't them. use a magnifying glass to burn them uh, le- leave them alone I can't wait for next episode when you tell me how you'd like to murder those bugs well speaking of bug murder and ants uh my horrible ant st- uh, bug story for this week is that one time i was in the bathroom and there was an ant crawling along the cupboard i assume looking for water or whatever it is they do when they're inside and i wanted to just mess with it because i was probably about nine and i touched it with my mom's curling iron oh boy. standing on a wet cupboard and so between the wet of the cupboard and the hot of the curling iron it just popped and like a little puff of steam came out oh of the god ant. and i remember being horrified that i had been part of this ant's no doubt oh. horrible to demise oh you you weren't part of it you caused it you were I, co- I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of horrible wrathful gods <laughs> i have murdered this ant and possibly the worst way possible so that's pretty rough <laughs> i really don't yeah, want is. amanda murders bugs or witnesses the horrible death of a bug <laughs> to become a segment on this podcast <laughs> but this is the second week in a row <laughs> <laughs> Oh well. Well, if if they're not destroyed, 
in in their war or if Amanda doesn't come by with a, Amanda doesn't come with a magnifying glass the the workers can live up to five years they have a pretty long lifespan and um queens of this particular species can live up to about 15 to 20 years oh wow so, so they can be the queen lifespan. of a of a nest for a long time mm-hmm. oh yeah how many if you may not know the number off the top of your head but did they have a rough estimate of how many offspring a single queen can have in that 20 year lifespan i mean it must be a trillion billion ants um well i mean if we want to do the do the math they can lay between five and 40 eggs a day so multiply that by 20 years oh my gosh (laughs) oh my god this is like one of those like one grain of rice on the chessboard questions by the time you're at the end of the chessboard it's more than all the rice in the world i don't know what percentage of those eggs are viable though so you know not not everything hatches although i imagine being tended to in a colony they probably have a higher a higher hatch rate than non-colonial insects but um yeah i I wouldn't know the number off the top of my head well i'm sure someone will do the math for us and i sorry listeners i don't know everything (laughs) i mean i struggled to do some pretty basic math the other day and i was like this is a problem i'm gonna (laughs) i need to be a functional adult who can do basic math (laughs) Uh, so we have a listener question today from valerie valerie asks what is the longest lived bug so probably uh, termite queens. They've been recorded to live for 50 years, but Whoa, some, scientists, well, some scientists believe they can live up to 100 years. So like the ant queen, she's just in there laying eggs all day. That's her only job. Every day. Every day. For 100 years? That, that sounds, sounds like a lot. you got reincarnated for being a bad person. Oops, you got <laughs> reincarnated as an ant queen. And at first you're like, yes, I'm the queen, I'm the queen. But then slowly you realize over time, oh no, this is a punishment worse it, than anything else. It does sound like a horror movie. You're just uh, laying eggs for 50 to 100 years. There, there are other long-lived species or long-lived groups as well tarantulas tarantulas uh, some females can live to be 35 um the males only live to be 12 years uh, because you know the males males aren't that important <laughs> males are a dime a dozen but we need the females to live a long time to reproduce this there's splendor beetles and golden uh blue breasted beetles that live to be 30 years old so there's there's bugs on this planet that are older than you yeah <laughs> yes for now happy birthday by the way <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday you're not Thank yet older you. than some types of bug so i am younger than uh, a very old trapdoor spider named number 16 and she lived to be about 43 she died in 2016 so uh, r.i.p number 16 um thanks for being <laughs> older for awesome. me. <laughs> <laughs> you were the og number 16 <laughs> and at least you're not you know stuck inside one room laying eggs for yeah. all this time and having your food pre-chewed for you and gently fed <laughs> to you by your nanny aunt. I'm, I'm pleased to have the freedom to eat my own food and not lay any eggs. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, laying eggs, what a time, what a time. Oh, that's gross. That's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so how do they determine who's going to be queen? Do they pick like the shiniest looking egg or does it just seem to be random? Uh, it's it's diet. They they start feeding the ant, whatever ant is going to be the queen, a very specific diet that can push her into the that fertile state. Mm. But uh, it's, I think it's diets richer in protein force oh. her into, into queendom. That would make sense given the egg production that's going to happen. Right. The amount of protein you have to have to make eggs. To make the eggs, yeah. I'm pretty sure with, with ants, any female, any l- female larva can become a queen. It's just that she's fed a much higher diet of protein, and that triggers it. I don't, I don't know how they choose which female to do that with. Considering the females are all the same, I don't think it matters. It could be based on the temperature of that particular place where that female is. It might be a better temperature, so you go by that. It could be humidity in the colony. It could be a particular pheromone that female, that larva is producing. I, I'm not really sure that's a question anyone has an answer to, not just me. I heard on QI when it comes to termites, QI, of course, being a great source of information. 
I've heard that termites at least will recognize the queen with like a little shaky curtsy. Do you have you ever witnessed ants doing anything <laughs> like that? I know I don't think ants do that. Okay. <laughs> That's really cute though. A little shake, a little butt shake. Yeah, I was I was doing some, you know, minor like bug things last night. One of them was that the uh, the, the workers will pause and shake for a moment and then they'll keep doing their little termite things. <laughs> Why? Uh, I Why would they do that? Like, what's the point? Deference of the to the queen, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, Amanda, out of six legs, how many legs would you give the pavement ants? Oh, hard to say. I'm, I'm not bothered by ants the way some people are really. Bo- some people, of course, being my husband, <laughs> I'm not bothered by ants the way some people are bothered by ants. If I'm outside, I'm in the ant land. As far as I'm concerned, if they're bothering me when I'm outside, that's because I've ventured into their war zone, and I'm right to be. <laughs> to be dismissed <laughs> get out of here we're trying to have a war here i like the answer 1950s announcers yes <laughs> I, I say it. get out of here don't you see there's a war on <laughs> i would say in general i'd give ants like two legs i'm sorry they're very common you don't like them huh i i, I you know it just feels like a very ubiquitous creature. They're everywhere all the time. They're not very unique as far as like ant to other ant in the colony goes. They're just all ants. I think they're necessary. I think they're great. I I just think they're a little basic. They're a little bit basic. Oh, the ants. Harsh. Uh, yep, harsh sorry. criticism on the. Uh, I'm sorry. Ant. I'm gonna get hate from the <laughs> from the ant lovers from of the big crowd. ant. From big ant, big ant conspiracies coming for me. <laughs> I, I think I'd give them a, a three out of six. They're, they're like a solid, a solid um, group of insects. Um, the pavement, pavement ants specifically, because I remember, because I see them all over the place. I like the familiarity of the pavement ants. Oh, see, I, I took them down for being all over the place. <laughs> you're, you're bumping them up. You're like, yes, them up. just one. Just one there one. they are, my buddy. <laughs> How's your drawing coming? Well, okay. So since since we last checked in with the drawings, she is a militant warrior. She's got pockets. She's got a bandana on her leg. So you know what group she's affiliated with. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure military people do that, but some people do do that. Uh, she's got one big robot arm to denote her super strength. She's got a stinger in that hand because she can sting. She's got one piece of grass. Oh, nice. To denote her her farmy background. Uh, there's not much going on with her legs, if I'm honest. Is there anything about ant legs that's cool or unique? Mm. Or should I just put cargo pants on her? I mean, I would I would go with cargo pants with pockets because ants are carrying things. They're Those carrying carry stuff. The more pockets, the better. Gotta, and fill them with sugar, with sweets. <laughs> oh, I really should have her some have candy bars some in there. Sort of, yeah, some sort of sugary treat that she's stolen from someone. A little donut sticking out of her pocket. How many scars across the eye can i reasonably get away with <laughs> i've gone with two and a cheek scar oh nice yeah she's seen some some pavement wars yes plus she's got that wrinkly face at least for this particular type of ant i kind of can't wait to see how you've drawn the wrinkly face it's just the scars is the only thing i've done to denote <laughs> yeah. the wrinkly face i guess i could make her like an old grizzled a grizzled like, old okay. veteran Grizzled old vet. She's seen some horrible things. All right, hold on. Let, let me age her real fast here. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that adds a lot of character to her to have her be old. <laughs> <laughs> old with her side shave here. Kind of takes her away from that Aeon Flex vibe. Although she is wearing pants, which is, takes her away from Aeon Flex <laughs> more than anything else. <laughs> it's amazing what some pants will do. Do, do, do. Sorry, I often will sing while I am working. So she's, I've given her a little stinger gun, which looks a lot like a grappling hook, if I'm honest, which probably isn't the most <laughs> anti thing in the world. But who, who does this ant fight for? Does she fight for the colony? Does she fight for someone else? Does she fight for herself? She, she fights for the colony. She would definitely fight for the colony. For the queen. Ants individually are not not very smart but ants together in a big group that's what matters how unique is one ant from another ant like genetically speaking are they all oh, clones we've already referenced anakin once can we <laughs> there we very, reference very the clone similar. war going on <laughs> she's just one of many 
that's what her story arc is about is finding out many, that, yeah that, like orphan black she's got all these other <laughs> militant clones out there give her kind of a ant-ish pattern on her chest here like the the mandibles of an ant oh i like that she's definitely got that some good mandibles give her unnecessary buckles wherever possible just because buckles feel very militant to me you can strap can you strap stuff to buckle so you can buckle things down so she can do more carrying yeah yeah so she can carry more stuff heavy stuff tortilla chips costco sized tortilla chip bags <laughs> man if you're an ant you want to live in the costco because they just have everything you could ever need there <laughs> as an ant as a kid i had elaborate fantasies about living in a costco <laughs> you run away from home and you live in the rafters of a costco do, 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 do. I love all the detail I'm hearing in this. It sounds like it's going to be very detailed. I, I, I worry that it's not detailed enough. Oh, yeah. The bane of my existence. Drawing feet. Just don't draw the feet or make them on point. <laughs> if I'm truly being inspired by Liefeld today, I should just have her standing in a puddle of water. Uh, put like an aphid in front of her or something. Just <laughs> the feet with some, an some aphid with object. a juicy butt. The aphid's got to have a round little butt <laughs> for the uh... for an aphid companion. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me give her some uh, giant candies. What other kind of candy is there? Candy canes? Well, she's, she's not Christmassy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to put behind her. Um, yeah, what? Uh, you could do those little colored hard candies with the twist wrapper on either side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's those good. are identifiable as candy. All right, here we go. Ready to reveal at least her black and white form to you. All right. So last week we had a name for our hero, Isabella Tiger Mom. <laughs> do we have a name for this ant or is she just an ant? Um, I can't think of anything in particular. I mean, she's, she's just the pavement ant. <laughs> All right. Coming into the live recording right now. Dropped. All right. All right. Let's see what you got here. Oh, I like that. That is. So we have her face scars for her wrinkly face, her giant arm, which I think, <laughs> frankly, I might make even bigger when I add some color to it. <laughs> Lots of sugary treats behind her, some pouches. She's a simple gal who loves sugar. And uh, fighting for the queen. I love it. I love her little stinger gun. And I really love her, her grass. Little touch <laughs> <of> grass. <laughs> She's too old for this. She's been trying to retire for several years now. Uh, a whole year in her five-year lifespan she's spent trying to retire. <laughs> it's great, Amanda. I, I love it. Every I think everyone is better than the last. <laughs> <laughs> well then we'll be really be cooking by uh by episode 10 we'll have some really yeah. good guys here although we'll, i think woolly bear is very close to my heart though oh i mean it's hard to beat that little monster face <laughs> excellent job amanda absolutely you, wonderful uh as always you can find the visual companion to our episodes on bugsneedheroes.com or on our associated socials bugs need heroes across i think most platforms we've got yeah. We're Reddit, on Instagram, Instagram, Reddit, and Twitter. I, do we have a Facebook? Are we going to have a Facebook? I hate Facebook. I don't want to deal with I personally <laughs> don't want to monitor a Facebook. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. I guess we're good. Are we good? I'm hungry. So that's our ant hero this time. Thanks for listening, guys. And we'll catch you next time. Bugs Need Heroes is created by Derek Conrad and Kelly Zimmerman. Hosted by Amanda Allen Nide and Kelly Zimmerman. Bugs Need Heroes is produced and edited by Derek Conrad. Our music is Ladybug Castle by Roll Music. All art is provided by Amanda Allen Nide. Got a bug question? Email us at bugsneedheroes at gmail.com. Check us out on bugsneedheroes.com for the visual companion to our episodes with the artwork of the bug-related heroes. We also have an Instagram, Twitter, and subreddit under the Bugs Need Heroes name. Thanks for coming by. Everyone knows you got to give something three episodes before you decide if it's for you or not.